Hello, good morning. Hope you have done the two tasks I gave you last week. One was about the zoo, whether you favor uh, zoos or uh, you are against it. You, are, where you were asked to present your views on uh, this topic. And the next uh, one was based on true liberty. Hope you have completed these two tasks. Now today, let us move on to unit three, where you get two stories about flying. The first one is first flight and the second one is black aeroplane. Each one of these stories is written by uh, different authors. Now our concern is the first flight. This is a story written by Lyme Flati. He was uh, from Ireland, a major Irish novelist and short story writer and he was known to write about common people's experience and to talk from their uh, perspective or from their point of view. And he was also known for his extraordinary storytelling ability. And two of his major works includes The Sniper and The Informer, which was published in 1923 and 1925, respectively. Now, this story is uh, about a young seagull who was so reluctant to take his first flight. We find him so frightened and moving to one corner, not even able to take a look at the sea, which he could see from uh, his uh, nest. And so, Lyme of Flati uh, has discussed uh, about uh, creatures associated with sea and to specify in this lesson it is a seagull. So Lyme of Flati, the author was known to be a keen observer of sea life, life associated with sea and he believed that man has to learn a lot from nature just like we have heard of uh, the great poet William Wordsworth. For him, nature was a solace, a comfort, and he learned a lot from nature. And just like that, this author was also having such an attitude. And this is the center, uh, the central character of uh, the lesson. This is a seagull, it's a seabird, which can be seen along the coastal areas throughout the world. And in this lesson, the author has given a humane touch to the seagull's flight. That is, he is treating the seagull almost similar uh, to a human being. And when we go through the story, we are reminded about our own experiences where we were afraid to undertake a new uh, task. Where, where we felt the same initial nervousness just like this uh, uh, young seagull we find in the story. And now for a better understanding, to get to know about the setting of the lesson, you can watch this video. See, uh, in the story, we find a place similar to this. This is a tall cliff where you can see the seagulls. This is a family of seagulls. You can see the adult birds as well as the dark colored ones are its young ones. And you can see the sea, the vast sea stretching beneath the tall cliff. This is an adult bird. See the tall cliff 
and the sea. The seagull's nest was among these uh, uh, cliffs in one of the ledges. Ledges I will show you the, another picture. And the horizontal uh, portion in the cliff is known by the name uh, ledge, by the term ledge. And the seagull, the mother bird, had built uh, uh, her nest in one of these ledges. And uh, all the uh, other uh, birds, the young ones, have left the nest and this uh, little one was left behind and you can see the adult bird this is an adult seagull These are young seagulls and you can see them taking uh, atoms of their own to fly. You can see small crevices like this where the uh, young seagull, which is uh, the central character in our lesson, used to hide itself. See, they are, take, uh, they are trying to fly on their own without any training from their parents. So hope you got a uh, a clear idea about the setting. Now, this is a ledge. You can see a much more narrow one and a broader one can be termed as a, a plateau. And so, let us go back to the lesson now. Now, two stories about flying by Lyamo Flati. His first flight. The young seagull, this young seagull was alone on his ledge. His two brothers and his sister had already flown away the day before. He had been afraid to fly with them. Somehow, when he had taken a little run forward to the brink of the ledge and attempted to flap his wings, he became afraid. The great expan expanse of the sea stretched down beneath, and it was such a long way down, miles down, he felt certain that his wings would never support him. So he bent his head and ran away back to the little hole under the ledge where he slept at night. Even when each of his brothers and his little sister, whose wings were far shorter than his own, ran to the brink, flapped their wings and flew away, he failed to muster up courage to take that plunge which appeared to him so desperate. 
So we find that the, his brothers and sister had already flown from the nest and this one was left alone, the young seagull. And as far as the wingspan of these birds were concerned, his, brother, his brothers and sister had much more, uh, sorry, a much shorter wingspan and rather th than this uh, uh, little one. Though the wingspan was much more bigger than his brother or sister, he didn't have the confidence to take the first flight. However hard he tried, he failed to gather the courage. Muster up is to gather. Muster up courage to take the plunge. Plunge is to fall suddenly, which appeared to him so desperate, so dangerous. His mother and father had come around him, calling to him shrilly, calling to him loudly, upbraiding him, scolding him, threatening him, threatening to let him starve on his ledge unless he flew away. So he tr they tried all means. They threatened him, they uh, scolded him and called out to him loudly and tried every means and threatened that and told him that he would be left there all alone to starve to death if he did not take this attempt. But for the life of him, he could not move. However hard he tried, he could not move an inch and could not take this attempt. That was 24 hours ago. It was one day before it all happened. Since then, nobody had come near him. The day before, all day long, he had watched his parents flying about with his brothers and sister, perfecting them in the art of flight, teaching them how to skim the waves and how to dive for fish. He had in fact seen his older brother catch his first herring and devour it, standing on a rock, while his parents circled around, raising a proud cackle. And all the morning, the whole family had walked about on the big plateau midway down the opposite cliff, taunting him with his cowardice. So uh, for a whole day, he was left alone on the cliff, on the ledge where the, the mother bird had built his, its nest. And he could see from there on the opposite cliff, on the plateau, uh, the, uh, the entire family was there and he could see uh, from the other uh, led, uh, uh, cliff uh, parents training his brothers and sister to, uh, to fly and to undertake various mode of flights, flight like uh, skimming, diving, and so on. So what is skimming? You get, I have a video here. To move very close to water, over the surface of water. Here you can see a bird skimming. Here, this is what skimming is. And you can see the seagull diving to catch fish here. In the concerned paragraph, we heard that his, one of his brothers had managed to dive and catch a herring. Herring is a sea fish. Here it's not a herring or, nor a fish, but something else. And devouring. Devouring is eating greedily. Devour. So that is diving. So that was 24 hours ago. Since then, nobody had come near him the day before. All day long, he had watched his parents flying about with his brothers and sister, perfecting them in the art of flight, teaching them how to skim the waves, 
how to dive for fish. He had, in fact, seen his older brother catch his first herring and devour it, e devour us eating greedily, standing on a rock while his parents circled around, raising a proud cackle. They were full of praise for the other little uh, birds, and they raised a proud cackle. In praise of them, they gave out a loud, uh, unpleasant cry. Cackle is a loud, unpleasant cry. And all the morning, the whole family had walked about on the big plateau, midway down the opposite cliff, taunting him. What is taunting? Taunting is to uh, make somebody upset by giving out unpleasant remarks. Often, in, uh, while at school, you taunt each other. And uh, uh, even at home, you taunt your brother or sister. It's common. So taunting him with cowards. Here, he is blamed of being a coward. Now, the sun was now ascending the sky, blazing on his ledge that faced the south. So it was getting hotter. Yeah, the sun was moving up and it was uh, getting hotter. He felt the heat because he had not eaten since the previous nightfall. So he was starving for almost a day. And so he, this heat was unbearable for him. He stepped slowly out to the brink of the ledge, eh, ledge brink his edge and standing on one leg with the other leg hidden under his wing he closed one eye then the other and pretended to be falling asleep so he wanted somehow to attract the uh, attract his parents towards him so he's playing a trick here he tried to uh, he pretended to sleep still they took no notice of him he saw his two brothers and his sister lying on the plateau, dozing with their heads sunk in, into their necks. So this is a common sight. When they sleep, they just shrink back their necks, uh, sorry, their heads into their necks. This fa sorry, his father was preening the feathers on his white back. Preening, uh, you might be familiar still. If you are not, you can watch this. This is what preening is, trying to groom themselves. This is preening. The bird's grooming itself. Okay. If the video was not clear, you couldn't see the video. This is uh, skimming. You can see this bird skimming.
Now getting back to the lesson. Yeah. So he tried to attract his parents towards uh, uh, his uh, uh, cliff, uh, the, the, his ledge uh, where he was uh, by pretending to sleep. But they took no notice. He saw his two brothers and his sisters, sister lying on the plateau, dozing with their heads sunk into their necks. His father was preening the feathers on his white back. Only his mother was looking at him. He was standing on a little high hump on the plateau, her white breast thrust forward. Now and again, he tore at a piece of fish that lay at her feet and then scraped each side of her beak on the rock. So he could see his mother enjoying a meal there. He was seen uh, to have a piece of fish at his uh, at her feet and he was, she was scraping his beak in between just to sharpen it. The sight of the food maddened him because he was starving uh, the previous day. How he loved to tear food that way, scraping his beak now and again to wet it. He loved to do that, the, what his mother was doing at uh, the moment. Ga, 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 he cried, begging her to bring him some food. So he called out, to his mother. Gokala, he screamed back derisively. Derisively uh, is given there in a manner which uh, makes someone feel that he or she is a fool. So she, she was not going to yield to the call of uh, her son. But he kept calling plaintively. Plaintively is uh, something that sounds sad in a complaining manner. And after a minute or so, he uttered a joyful scream. But all on a sudden, the tone of his scream changed. It was a joyful scream. What was the reason? His mother had picked up a piece of fish and was flying across to him with it. He leaned out, eagerly tapping the rock with his feet, trying to get nearer to her as she flew across. So this, uh, this uh, young one was so excited to see the mother bird coming towards uh, him and he tried to move to the edge of the ledge and uh, he wanted to reach the, uh, the mother bird. But when she was just opposite to him, something happened. She halted. He stopped. Her wings motionless. He was not moving further. The piece of his fish, sorry, the piece of fish in her beak almost within the reach of his beak. So it was almost within his reach but he couldn't reach it. He waited a moment in surprise. Why? What happened to my mother? Why is she not coming towards me? Wondering why she did not come nearer. And then, maddened by hunger, he dived at the fish. What happened? He was not within the reach. The mother bird was not within the reach of the bird. And so, naturally, he fell down with a loud scream. He fell outwards and downwards into space. Then a monstrous terror seized him and his heart stood still. So for a moment he knew that he was falling. He was moving away from the uh, cliff as well as falling down. And so he was so terrified. And, but that was only for a minute. It only lasted a minute. The next moment he felt his wings spread outwards. So after all, he's a bird. So na the, the natural instinct in him was awakened and he spread out his uh, wings. The wind rushed against his breast feathers, then under his stomach and against his wings. He could feel the tips of his wings cutting through the air. He was not falling headlong now. So as soon as, the, uh, as his wings were stretched out, he was not falling headlong. He was not falling with foes. He started soaring. He was balancing in the air. He was soaring gradually downwards and outwards. He was still falling, but in a, in a gradual manner, away from the cliff and that too downwards. He was no longer afraid. He just felt a bit dizzy because it was a, it is the first time that he's stepping out of his comfortable uh, nest and he is uh, right now in the air, his first experience in the air. He just felt a bit dizzy. Then he flapped his wings once and he soared upwards. Soaring is to gain height, soared upwards. 
Ga 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 gokla his mother swooped past him her wings making a loud noise so the mother couldn't control her excitement he came past him and he answered her with another scream then his father flew over him screaming he saw his two brothers and his sister flying around him curveting and banking and soaring and diving so these are the uh, different modes of flight that the uh, that we can see the birds uh, undertake while they are in the air curveting is to jump like a horse and banking is to fly with one wing higher than the other and soaring gaining heights and diving all these you can watch uh, in another video so here oh, sorry here it's not a seagull but uh, an eagle see that is banking one flying with one wing higher than the other then now it is soaring up flapping its wings now again banking look at the movement of the tail it is adjusting the flight by adjusting the position of the tail again soaring up coming down diving and so on so i hope it is clear all the terms are clear to you then he completely forgot that that he had not always been able to fly and commanded himself to dive and soar and curve shri shrieking shrilly so he forgot that he was uh, not able to fly uh, till then and he was enjoying his flight he was near the sea now flying straight over it facing straight out over the ocean and the next experience of the bird this is a first time experience in water he didn't know that what water is so he saw a vast green sea beneath him with little ridges ridges denotes the waves you know the waves are mild not rough as we get it on the shore near the shore R little ridges moving over it and he turned his beak sideways and cawed amusedly he was so happy his parents and his brothers and sister had landed on this green flooring ahead of him so they, the entire family was on uh, was floating in water already they were beckoning to him calling him calling shrilly calling out loudly he dropped his legs to stand on the green sea he thought it was a flooring a solid uh, surface and he thought of landing on it with his legs his legs sank into it he screamed with fright and attempted to rise again flapping his wings he was uh, totally scared and he tried to rise out of water by flapping his wings but he was tired and weak with hunger and he could not rise exhausted by the strange exercise this strange exercise denotes his first flight this is the first time he is attempting such a thing in his life so he was so exhausted his feet sank into the green sea and then his belly touched it and he sank no further 
he was floating on it and around him his family was screaming and praising him and their beaks were offering him scrape uh, scraps of a dog fish he had made his first flight so the entire family was celebrating they were praising him and offering him as a reward scraps small bits of uh, dog fish that's and the type of fish maybe they have caught it uh, while they were enjoying in water he had managed uh, his first flight that is how uh, the little bird took his first flight and so to sum sum up the lesson you can say the first flight the story of the young bird was a magnificent story a beautiful story on the need of courage and self confidence the author tried to teach the need of courage and self confidence in uh, our day to day life and it also can be termed as a parable 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 is a story which has a moral the first teacher who used to teach his disciples using parable was none other than jesus christ so a parable about overcoming fears in life how to overcome fears in life now you have might have heard of the saying necessity is always the mother of invention necessity is the mother of invention but sometimes uh, it needs an out a spark from outside that is what we find in the lesson so indeed the birds knew, bird knew how to fly but an initial spark was given by his mother at times this is uh, found essential in real life too so it highlights the importance of independence we find the bird to uh, learning to be independent in life and the need of motivation to attain goals and as the saying goes every journey of a thousand miles begins but with a single step so this single step is the most difficult move that uh, that you face in life while you venture out uh, new things new task and uh, if you overcome this or if you are able to take the single step and you can see that uh, you can overcome mountains and let us conclude the lesson by this uh, chinese proverb give a man a fish and you feed him for a day teach a man to fish and you feed him for a lifetime so this is a chinese proverb and uh, uh, the mother bird seemed to be well aware of this uh, proverb and so she taught her uh, her her young one to fish and not to be fed so there hope it is clear to you and we would bind up the class